over the last few weeks, I have had the same question come up three times, which is, should we build a data warehouse? Which is honestly a great question to ask. It generally means that you're finally getting to a point in your analytical journey where you've likely building a lot of either dashboards or spreadsheets manually over and over again. You're starting to get enough data that you wanna start answering more questions or you're reading way too many articles and feeling way too much FOMO and I apologize for everything that I've done in that space. The point is you need to answer the question, do you need a data warehouse? And the truth is not everyone does, not everyone needs a data warehouse. And in this video, we're gonna answer the question, do you need a data warehouse? And then also dig into some reasons why you might not want one, as well as maybe a few other options on how you could quickly maybe uh, answer some questions without building a data warehouse. So first let's understand exactly what a data warehouse does and is. Now I'm just gonna take Bill Inman's description of this, which is a data warehouse is a subject oriented, integrated, time-variant, non-volatile collection of data in support of management's decision-making process. Essentially, it's a place you can centralize data that, one, allows you to integrate or join data across various types. So that could be against finance, marketing, operations, whatever other departments you have, as well as add in things like historical components because not all operational systems track that all that tend to be geared towards creating other layers of decision-making processes for management. And I do like that they point out that it's actually for a specific use case because it's not just about centralizing data. It's not just about being able to join that data across various sources. It's about actually doing something with that data. In fact, that's one of the reasons you might not want to build a data warehouse, which is you have no idea what you're gonna do with it. Yeah, don't build a data warehouse without a plan. Make sure it's aligned with your business. But let's talk about the benefits, and many of them were outlined in this description, but let's dig a little deeper. First, one thing that wasn't mentioned is accessibility, which data is often stored in operational systems. Some of these operational systems create some sort of reporting or some way you can extract data. Usually it's very manual, and then you have to do some slicing and dicing afterwards. And even then, there are other systems that are often uh, your core systems if you're a SaaS service, Oh, sorry, I always accidentally duplicate you know, solutions as a service, um, the word twice. I did that a few videos ago with SFTP and uh, protocol. Point being that those systems often have data models that are very complex behind them because they're normalized. This is very difficult to access both in terms of some sort of solution, we have to download a report, as well as from some database directly by analysts and other users who are not as technical or it's just a hassle to have to go and you know download this Excel every time from 30 different sources and join them all together. So one key point is creating a central location that also remodels the data in such a way that is easy for the general user to understand. That's one reason a lot of people follow the fact dim approach because it's very simple for end users to understand. And it's kind of a compromise in terms of engineering in how you support that whole system. It has some uh, trade-offs. It's more denormalized, which has its own trade-offs, but it's not completely one big table approach, which some people do like. It's kind of this method where most people can understand the fact tables in the middle. You're gonna query it using these dimensions, which will be generally how you kind of aggregate or slice and dice your data. So it makes the data super easy to access because it creates one central place you can access it as well as makes it easy for analysts who maybe don't understand the entire technical landscape of what's going on uh, behind the scenes in terms of breaking it down into entities that they would understand, like orders and stores and things that are very kind of easy to abstract. So you've now made it more accessible in two different ways, both by centralizing it as well as making it easier to understand. So that's one reason you might consider building a data warehouse. Another very important reason why you want to build a data warehouse is because you want to track historical data. The thing about some operation systems is they don't always track historical information. As soon as you uh, change customer information, you lose where they used to live, for example. If you want to do an analysis on you know, how much customers spent in different states uh, year over year, but you only have the most current information about where they live, you can't do that analysis. You can do a kind of fake analysis that would be inaccurate because you know maybe I moved from Seattle to Denver uh, in the last two years, and now you just put me in the bucket of Denver, even though you know in prior years I was in uh, Seattle. 
So that's another aspect of data warehouses is they should be tracking historical information. That way, when someone asks that question, that time dimension is tracked over time. Sometimes this is done by slowly changing dimensions. Some other approaches just have you track every day in a basically fresh table. But overall, you somehow need to track historical information and archive it. Next is integrating data. Now, what this means is that currently in, at many companies, they have data that lives in various uh, data sources, whether that's Salesforce, HubSpot, um, wherever. Sometimes those data sets are integrated. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes you, the best you can do is maybe try to join on email. The point being is you need to do something in terms of making that data easier to integrate. What you could do is let everyone try to figure out the best way they can integrate it. Again, someone's going to do it by email. Someone's going to figure out how to somehow attach a customer ID. Someone's going to do it by first name, last name, you know, plus first name, last name equals, etc. Meaning you're going to get very different results every time, right? Like no one's going to get the same results and it could be wrong. So creating some form of integration layer usually is beneficial. Now for some people that's like a CDP or customer data platform where everything gets centralized, but that's not the only thing that needs to be integrated. At larger companies, customers aren't the only thing. There's a lot of other systems that need to be integrated. And this was something I was very spoiled with at Facebook because all of our systems were integrated at the application layer. So it was very easy to join data across. But at most companies, that's not the case. It's really hard to integrate data. I remember the example I was give, I was tasked uh, at my first job to join project information from two different systems. And one had a project ID, which was like, okay, this one has project ID. It was mostly high level information, budget, things of that nature. The other was hours. So it was like people were tracking their hours to specific projects. Cool. One had clear a clear column for project ID and people were using it. The other had project number, which kind of devolved into a free for all, right? Cause it was a free text form. Basically people would do everything from project ID, comma, project ID, comma, project ID, which has its own problems. Uh, they put the project budget in, they put other numbers in different IDs. It just never worked. So you could never integrate that system and you can never do analytics across. Uh, the only way to fix that for anyone who's out there is you need to go to one team who's causing the issue and, and tell them they need to change what they're doing. Um, Cause there's no other way to manually go through all of that. And it's not really worth it um, to do that. So that's the value of integrating, right? Like oftentimes you want to answer questions across different systems. And the only way to do that is by integrating data. And the one place you can do that or a good place to do that is in the data warehouse is in through your ETL process. You might, you know, start joining data, start creating some sort of logic that your whole company has agreed on can integrate data. So that's part of it. Next. Another thing is just general automation. And so one thing we'll talk about in terms of reasons you might not want to do a data warehouse is because you don't need automation. If you don't need to automate reporting because you only do reporting once a month uh, and it takes you an hour, a data warehouse might be overkill. It seems great. It seems like we're gonna have this automated. I'm gonna get this like free hour back, but the amount of maintenance upkeep and costs that go into that one hour, or at least removing that one hour is going to be far more than that one hour of work. So if you have automation, data warehouses are a great place to kind of automate a lot of your reporting and build a lot of your reporting off of um, that is automated because you often have data pools that happen automatically. You know, you don't have to wait or do things manually every day. So that's a reason for why you want to build a data warehouse because you want to automate reporting. Now, those were the benefits. Let's talk about the use cases of a data warehouse. Now, the most straightforward way is reporting and dashboarding. These are the most common use case that people will build their data warehouse for. So you'll build your pretty Tableau dashboard or you'll build your standard report. My one comment there is don't feel too tight tied to that idea. Sometimes you just need a single number and that single number needs to get sent somewhere, uh, either to a person or a machine at a specific time, uh, to kind of automate the rest of the process. And I think that's kind of gonna bring me to use case number two, which is automating certain decisions that are small enough that you could just, you know, process them through the data warehouse and then have them automatically do something. I don't remember who it was on LinkedIn that pointed out that, you know, data warehouses already have all the information. They should be making some baseline decisions. And I think that makes sense. There are some decisions that, you know, do you need a human in the loop? Can you remove them? Maybe initially you have them in um, the loop, uh, whether it's about increasing ad spend or something like that. But eventually you might want to get to the point where now you're just pushing it off uh, to a process that automatically makes a decision based on a number. So don't feel too attached to building out a dashboard because truthfully, if someone has a clear idea of how they're making decisions on numbers they're seeing on a dashboard, even that should eventually maybe in theory be automated. So that's kind of a second use case, automating some baseline decisions. 
Next, as much as a lot of uh, machine learning and data science happens on like the data lake layer or more of the raw data layer that just gets processed, there's a lot of machine learning and uh, data science that gets built on top of data warehouses. In fact, I was recently getting pitched a tool that did just that, which was built ML models easily on top of your data warehouse. A lot of people will honestly, instead of using a traditional feature store, will just take a table in the data warehouse, develop some sort of feature store-esque table. It's not perfect, but it can work. Then they'll create data sets either internally or externally, or maybe they'll just create a query that creates different data sets, whether that's for training, testing, et cetera. And then you have to make sure it stays the same. And there's a lot more that goes into it, but essentially they'll use it. Usually they'll build their own kind of sandbox that they'll work on, but that way they can trust the data. Because another point about data warehouses is their data should be very accurate. You know, you should go through levels of data quality checks. You should be deduping data. Um, there's all these other things. Um, that you should be doing with data. Like that's why they call it like the source of truth. It never really is the perfect source of truth, but it's supposed to be the closest thing your company can rely on. And that's why it's a great idea to build your ML models um, off your data warehouse, because you know that that data is hopefully, if you've built it well, reliable in theory. Now, those were high level use cases. If you're to dig more specifically, you'd see things like people creating marketing dashboards so they can know where they should be spending money. You'd see people tracking team performance to kind of know if they're teetering off, uh, you know, if their performance is starting to, to lag behind and if they need to put some sort of training or something in place to make sure that they can kind of bring that up again. Um, you might have something that is used for tracking or forecasting, right? Like forecasting how much overtime is currently occurring at your IT desk or something, which is something that I've done in terms of building a data warehouse, in terms of what I've built off of a data warehouse. And generally these are all offshoots from a data warehouse. They might not be the core data warehouse. They might be something called like a data mart, but that's kind of the general idea of some of these use cases. Now let's talk about why you don't need a data warehouse and then we'll dive into a few other options. Look, the truth is if you're only building reporting that gets seen maybe once a month or once a week, you're already starting to teeter on the, do you need a data warehouse question? Really the way to think about it is how much data are you dealing with? How many data sources? Um, how many transactions? Is the data really messy? And do you have to spend a lot of time, you know, processing it? If the answer to all this is, you know, a lot, then the question to, do you need a data warehouse becomes more likely? Yes. But if you're really only doing, you know, an hour a week, two hours a week of some sort of reporting or something similar, the answer could likely be no because it's very expensive to take on a data warehouse. You need to hire someone that manages that or bring on a consultant, both of which you know aren't cheap. If you hire a solid data engineer or data architect or someone that's gonna build and, and deploy this, it's likely gonna cost you upwards of 150K a year on top of all the solutions costs, which could also you know be upwards of 30 to who knows 100K, depending on how much data you're dealing with. So if your company is small, maybe baseline reporting is okay. And there are other options in terms of solutions. Recently, I've kind of thrown around the idea for some companies about Tinybird and Rockset, which just kind of sit on top of some data sources. They don't do all data sources, but they do sit on top of some data sources so that you can answer your questions really fast. You don't have to build a whole data warehouse. You don't have to create an ingestion layer. You can just have access and query your data right there. And if you only need baseline questions, this could be enough. That, that That's a totally viable option. Excel is still arguably a viable option for some people. Um, honestly, sticking Tableau directly on certain solutions could be a good option for the beginning. I know some people are probably laughing, like, don't you always need to build a data warehouse for data quality and all of that. And at a certain point, yeah, the answer becomes yes. But if your company's small, it doesn't have the budget for it. It's not going to hire someone to support it. There's a lot of reasons why you shouldn't go forward and build a data warehouse. I'll put up a quick picture on maybe something to help you make that decision on should you, you know, build a data warehouse or not here. Um, you can just look at this graphic and that should help you just quickly answer the question, should you build a data warehouse without having to go too much further? But that's kind of the general spiel. A data warehouse is great. It's going to make sure you have some sort of source of truth that centralizes your system, makes your data easy to access by analysts, integrates data, it does so much, but to get there is an expensive journey. And honestly, I've seen a lot of projects fail and I've come into a lot of projects that have failed. So before jumping in this journey, do take a moment and consider if you're doing enough reporting for your team. And if you are, maybe the answer is no. Other than that, thanks so much for watching this video. I will see you next time. Thanks and goodbye.